Hey guys, today I want to kind of go through a, a simple solar electric fencing for your cow system. Uh, I know a few people are a little intimidated the uh, their first little endeavor into uh, electric fencing, but uh, I'm going to tell you it's really simple once you understand kind of the basic concepts of how these things work, and uh, they're very very effective at keeping your cows in. So with that I'm going to get right into it, but uh, the basics are uh, I like the solar chargers because I have pastures that are very, very far from any power source. I've actually had some kind of bad luck with trying to run like underground cable and all this other stuff that for one, it's hard, it's expensive, and uh, I don't think it's necessary. These little solar chargers work very, very well. I haven't even gotten to the point where I've spent a ton of money on any of them. I've kind of stayed in the sub $300 range, and I've had very, very good success with them. Now I've also got some cheaper stuff I'll show you that if you're really on a budget, it'll work. It's not ideal, but it'll certainly get you going. But basically, I think the confusing part a lot of people have about these solar chargers is they don't have to operate on any kind of loop uh, or anything. So all you have is when you buy these chargers, like this is a Ken Cove one. Uh, that's probably my favorite one actually. Uh, but basically they come with two leads that come off of them. You've got a ground, which here in Louisiana, we have soft, wet clay soil. So I can get away with one ground rod. If you're in a real dry, rocky area, area, you may have to do something a little bit different for your grounding. I can actually ground mine to a barbed bar fence if I want, uh, because our ground is so uh, saturated and so fine. Uh, but I still drive a ground rod. Eight, it's an eight foot ground rod driven, uh, I guess, six and a half or so feet in the ground. And then you got a second lead, which goes is your hot side so i connect this to my hot wire so i've got a few different styles of fencing but basically i've got my main pastures in about 20 acre blocks so this whole area is about 20 acres that's fenced in with permanent fencing kind of see it all along there and some mesh fence this barbed wire on this back side and then what i like to do is i divide them in half with this is a three strand fence and one of the strands is electric. And uh, it's all you really need to keep your cows from leaning on your fence or really putting any pressure on your fencing. And then what that allows me to do is to create jumpers to go across, I like to divide it into smaller parcels so we can do our rotational grazing. So I'm gonna show you how I hook up those uh, little jumper lines to do the, the subdivide paddocks. Uh, but before I do that, I wanna show you uh, a little bit more right here. So I do like to set up, this is a 14 gauge wire in the middle of this hot wire. And uh, you don't even need anything this elaborate. This is more than you actually need. Uh, but I like to have a nice solid wire in the middle. This is kind of what I run everything off of. So I don't want it to be weak in any kind of way. So I do end up putting one of the springs. And if you look, I don't know if I can see it on here. But if you see right in there, you probably can't quite see it, but there's some notches cut in the spring. So there's one, I don't wanna get shocked, right there. And the other one is right under this bar. And they're set up so that when you ratchet, ratchet it tight, when the spring reaches that mark, it's like 125 pounds of pressure, which is just right for a 14 and a half gauge wire. If you go to the second one, it's for a heavier wire, like a 12 gauge wire. So they're already kind of loaded so you can see when it starts getting loose you can come over here and uh, you can just ratchet this a little tighter. I like these little bull nose insulators and if you look I know everybody will tell you the right and the wrong way to set them up but if you look at the manufacturer's information you always loop through I'm gonna call it the long side uh, so that the wires basically create uh, compression in the center. Uh, if you do it the other way, they're pulling apart and they can actually break the insulators. So you got your main line set up. I don't like to put tons of gates all over my property. So what I do is at the ends of the fields and for my... All right, hello, how are you? Yes, I know. This is hard face. He was one of our uh, bottle calves. But anyway, I don't like to have tons of gates. So you can see this is my brace post. 
on the other end of my brace post the same way it's about 100 feet from the perimeter fence and i just use single strand electric on these uh to break or to uh close these gaps so i don't have tons of gates or anything like that so if i don't have cows in this pasture there's no gates to open i can just roll right through all my fields no problem but here's where you get into you can find tons of information there's a million different kind of reels this is actually one of my older reels that uh i kind of started with but basically uh you can use any electric reel you want you could spend as little or as much as you want these are like eight bucks nine bucks something like that so i started with about eight or ten of these and i actually still have all but maybe one that a cow stepped on and cracked uh, they last many many years with no problem but first let me show you so all of my reels like that what i do is i put a non-insulated handle on the end of it so i can run and just hook it straight to my fence on the other and i'll show you what i mean so if you look here i got a non-conductive handle so i can hook this to anything any of my fences barbed wire uh woven wire you can see it won't shock me it's not the one that has the metal that goes through and conducts electricity so i always start away from uh or you can do it either way but basically you can just hook it to your fence i know i'm gonna catch some heat for this but again it's purely preference you hear o'brien's tread in posts are the best and this particular post is the best but I like these because they're pretty cheap and our ground gets really really hard so with these i can take a rubber mallet and i can hammer these sun guard posts in they're fiberglass every now and again the little clips will break uh, but these are like two bucks so i buy like a hundred at a time and again they last i don't know i've got some that are probably at least 10 years old they last a long time uh most of the time when they get broken, it's just from throwing them around in mules or running over them with a tractor or something like that. And I use single strand. So you can see, I like the tape just because I think the cows and the deer can see it better. I think I have more trouble with deer knocking a fence down than anything. So I like the tape or some of the, uh, the little ribbons that are thinner, but in general, I prefer the tape because uh, we have a lot of deer around here. And I put them on, you count from the bottom, one, two, three, and that's 28 inches a single strand of 28 inches and i never have a cow get out unless a deer or something knocks the fence and then the cows walk out what's up bud and so then you just pull it over here let me get back over there get back over here and like on this particular type of reel so i've got like the little little mini reels and stuff that have hooks on them and they can hang themselves like this you can see i've just got a little bungee cord and I put around, hooked it back to the reel. And I just take these little double alligator clip jumper wires like this. And you can see that's the electrified side all the way up to that bullnose insulator. And you take your electric clip and you clip it onto the fence. And now that's hot. And I've got a subdivide on any paddock I want. Uh, and that seems to work really, really well for us. And uh, that's all I use on my cows for the most part is, uh, say I have perimeter fence that's uh, more solid, but all my interior fences are uh, basically single strand electric on at least two sides where I'm doing my subdividing. So the other thing, like I said, don't be scared. I've got some of these really cheap. These I bought originally, they're like, I don't know, when I bought these, they were like $99, or something like that. You can actually use these if you're not running a ton of fence. Most of what I have is still these cheap electric. I have four or five other good reels. They're out in the pasture somewhere right now. But you can get started for very, very cheap. Two, three hundred bucks. You can have enough stuff to do a couple of subdivide paddocks on your pasture. And you can get started with uh, your electric fencing, which really helps facilitate some uh, rotational grazing or intensive grazing or... Uh, any of those types of grazing where you put your animals on small areas for higher impact and uh, shorter duration. And to me, don't let the electric fencing materials uh, intimidate you. It's super simple where, like I said, 
electric solar charger you need a ground and then you hook it to a hot wire and that hot wire can run this way it can run 40 different ways as long as it's connected it doesn't have to loop back or do anything like that a little green light right here I can see from uh, my house about half a mile away so in the morning before it's daybreak I can look out there I can tell if it's working or not and then uh, I've got a little test meter I can come out here and test it so maybe we'll do that real quick so you can see I've got these little Ken Cove mini reels I've only had these a couple of years now uh, I actually really like these but only when I'm doing my short runs so this is most of my fields if it's just a cross fence it's about two to three hundred feet long uh, for the cross fence and they're fine for that if you try to put the smaller wire on these things and put six seven hundred feet uh, your arms will be so tired rolling them things up that uh, it's just miserable so I use them but only for my cross fence but I don't like to use these like I'll fence in some of the areas outside my pastures and I've got to make real long runs you know uh, a couple of thousand feet I don't I won't even use these I've got a couple of big reels that I use for that and uh, those electric those uh, electrical cord spools I showed you earlier I use those and it actually works a lot better when you got long distances to crank you might want to consider uh, you know, some geared reels because uh, they'll wear you out but anyway that's about all I got for uh, the electric fencing like I said a lot of people seem somewhat intimidated by it but uh, I just want to let you know it's really simple and once you got the basic concept, you can just jump off those things any kind of way uh, that makes sense for you and whatever setup you have. Uh, so you can just expand it to anything you need once you just kind of understand the, the very basics of how they work. Anyway, you guys have a good day and I will catch you on the next one.